Hi everyone, Anita here. I am back from my holiday in Brisbane and I have a little bit of a book haul, just a little bit of a mini book haul to show you guys. The bookstore I went to was Dimmix. It was absolutely fantastic. It blew me out of the water. One of the best bookshops I have ever been to. Because I had my sweater on, because in Brisbane it was a little bit cooler, I had my sweater on. Still have to wear a mask down there and those poor people are in lockdown. Lucky my cousin and I got to have at least a decent holiday there before things got a bit too, a bit too serious in terms of the pandemic and how things are going. So yeah, we when shopping on Queen Street, which is just this um, marketplace, I guess you could say, or the street of shopping and shops and all that kind of stuff. I found a bookshop, Demix, like I said. And because you go actually, like, there's stairs leading to down below under the ground, basically. It was very hot and I had my sweater on because it was a quite a cold day. It was a bit of a cool day. We're in winter now in Australia, so of course it would be cool. And it was hot, it was sweltering, so I didn't stay there as long as I really wanted to. I still got books though, I still bought books. The first one is one I have already read, but I loved it so much that I needed it physically in my hands. That is The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. Or is it better this way? Yeah, that's it. Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. Historical fiction about the um, first in Oxford English Dictionary, how that came to be about. And it's also in the backdrop of the Great War, which I think is either World War One or World War Two or something like that. And also the women's suffrage movement. Like I said, I've already read this. I loved it so much that I needed to get it physically in my hands. Book two, I freaked out when I found this. Like, in the city where I live, we don't have a Dimmix. So when I went down to Brisbane, a Dimmix is where I really wanted to go. And the bookshop that I frequently go to in the city that I live in doesn't... Like, it's got a good selection of books, but it doesn't have all of the books. Because Brisbane is a bigger city than the city I'm living in, they have more to offer down in Brisbane. When I found this book, I freaked out, just like with the like with another book I'm, I'll tell you about later. But it is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. I can't believe when I found this, I freaked out. I'm sorry if I keep looking over this way, I'm... Like, the camera's over here, not over there, you know what I mean? But anyway, I freaked out when I found this. I was like, you're coming home with me. It's a bit of a different edition. The edition, well, the other edition I'll put up on the screen. And when I found, I like this one a bit more because the other one, you know how the cover flap is a little shorter than the back flap? And it's just, I don't know how you would say it or what it's called, but I love this one because it's just... No, it's so beautiful. It really is. Anyway, House in the Cerulean Sea, incredibly popular. Um, Linus Baker leads a quiet life. At 40, he has a tiny house with a devious cat and his beloved records for company. And at the department in charge of magical youth, he spent many dull years monitoring the orphanages. And then one day, Linus is summoned by extremely upper management and given a highly classified assignment. He must travel to an orphanage where six dangerous children reside including the Antichrist. There, Linus must somehow determine if they could bring on the end of days. But the guardian, charming and, charming and enigmatic Arthur Parnassus, will do anything to protect his wards. As Arthur and Linus grow ever closer, Linus must choose between Judy and his dreams. I freaked out when I found this. I was like, you're coming with me. Like I've said, I have heard nothing but really great, incredible things about it. So looking forward to this, as well as the other books that I have bought, except for Dictionary of Lost Words, because I've already read it. I'm expecting to feel all the feels, to have a good cry, and to just read a very wholesome book. This next book, I was originally going to get it here in the city I live in, but I thought to myself, well, why not just, you know spoil yourself while you're like on holiday so i bought the once we're meant to find by joan he three years ago c woke on the shore of an abandoned island with no idea how she got there she lives in a shack with an aging android and a single memory she has a sister now she has to escape and find her from the safety of the eco city floating above earth now decimated by natural disasters 16-year-old Casey mourns her sister. She's convinced to see is dead. She too wants to escape 
The eco city is meant to be a sanctuary for people who want to save the planet, but its inhabitants are willing to do anything for refuge, even lie. Is Casey ready to use technology to help Earth, even though it failed her sister? C and Casey think that what they know about each other and their world is true. Both are wrong. If you loved, we lie. We were liars. Or Black Mirror, you'll love the ones we're meant to find. A clever, inspirational thriller. Oh, okay. It's a thriller. But I've heard this is actually more sci-fi. It's quite heavy on the sci-fi. I don't think that'll be too much of a problem for me because I'm finding out that I am actually really enjoying sci-fi and that I feel like sci-fi could be a genre I could read more of in the future. So I'm very excited to see really incredible sci-fi elements, good social commentary about the environment, like how to protect Earth, how to protect the animals in the sea, because I think all of the proceeds of this book are going to... I know it says it somewhere, I just can't find it, but I know all the proceeds that this book gets is going to Ocean Conservatory, which is fantastic, I love that. I'm also hoping for some really good sister sister relationships um obviously maybe through flashbacks and i'm also very curious to see about what the thriller is about whether the thriller has to do with the environment and how like we killed earth basically i don't know i'm very curious to see where the thriller aspect gets into it because i've heard this is more sci-fi than it was originally made to be now this next one Oh my god, you thought I flipped my shit when I found House in the Cerulean Sea? I flipped my shit when I found this book, Middle Game by Sean and Maguire. Oh, I've been after this book for years and I finally have it in my hands. Meet Roger, skilled with words. Languages come easily to him. He instinctively understands how the world works through the power of story. Meet Dodger, his twin. Numbers are her world, her obsession, her everything. Well, she understands she does so through the power of math. Roger and Dodger aren't exactly human, though they don't realise it. They aren't exactly gods either. Not entirely. Not yet. Meet Reed, skilled in the alchemical arts like his progenitor before him. Reed created Dodger and her brother. He's not their father, not quite, but he has a plan. To raise the twins to the highest power, to ascend with them and claim their authority as his own. Godhood is attainable, pray it isn't attained. I love that last little sentence right there. Now, I have read a series by this author, but she uses the pseudonym or pen name of Myra Grant. I actually have it right here. So, which is the, which is Feed, which is the first book in the News Flesh trilogy. It's like a book about zombies in the zombie apocalypse. It actually has some sci-fi elements in here, which I wasn't expecting. And yeah, so Myra Grant is actually, no, Myra Grant is the pseudonym, Sean and Maguire is her birth name, her real name. I'm hoping to have a very similar reading experience in terms of her writing because I loved her writing in the Newsflesh trilogy, which is actually a quartet, but because there's like politics involved in it, like actual like pol political campaigns and stuff like that, that um, the fourth book actually revolves around another political party like the opposite political party to the one we've been following for the three books in the News Flesh trilogy. I'm excited to read this. I don't want to say too much about how I'm excited I am for it or overhype it too much for myself because I don't want to overhype it for myself because I will ruin it for myself. The fact that this is a fantasy standalone. It also says up here at the top blurb, New York Times bestselling... And Alex Nebula and Hugo Award-winning author Shauna Maguire introduces readers to a world of amorical alchemy, shadowy organizations, and impossible cities in a standalone fantasy middle game. The fact that this is, like, a standalone fantasy speaks to me emotionally. And maybe not emotionally, but it just speaks to my soul at this moment because I've been reading quite a lot of fantasy series it's just good to have a fantasy standalone that's just like one and done, busted out of the way. Not that there's anything wrong with series or book series, but they have been known to be very long, very chunky, especially the ones I'm looking at reading in the future. So having a fantasy standalone in my hands physically makes me very happy and I'm just so unbelievably excited to read this book. 
this is it. This is the books. I'm very happy with them. I'm very happy. Like I said, I've already read Dictionary of Lost Words. Loved it. I have it physically in my hands now that I loved it so much. And these other three books right here that I'm just so unbelievably excited to read. Now, if it looks a little weird, it's because I'm filming this on my phone. Um, nothing wrong with my camera at all. I just want to change it up a little bit. Like, because sometimes when I bulk film a video, you know, your camera battery runs flat. It's like, I just, I have a phone here that's just as good. Why can't I use it? I will be using the camera though. I'm not going to be ditching the camera or anything. And I have really good natural lighting here. Like it's actually really good. And I don't want to have to spend money on lighting or anything. So that's why I'm sitting here. Back to the old rouge from when I first started this booktube channel. So how about that? Coming full circle. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. That is the end of the video. Leave a comment down below. Have you read any of these books? If you have, let me know what you thought of them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.